Good evening and welcome to the class of 2025 registration live event. My name is Greg Commander and it's my great honor to be the principal here at Bel Air High School. This is my 11th year at Bel Air High School and definitely the most challenging over the past year. I want to welcome all of you here and again for those I haven't had the pleasure of meeting we may have some uh, older children that have gone through the school system. I hope you find this evening to be a very informative evening for all of you. I know things have been a challenge this year, but I really want to thank our school counseling office for everything that they're doing to prepare everyone for the next school year. I know it's hard to think about that considering we're still in the middle of this year, but it is important that you know we build our master schedule this time every year. We have to do that so we have make sure that we have all the classes put in place, teachers in place, making sure of class size and enrollment. So it's a very important evening and I thank you for being here. I do wish we could be in person so we can meet one on one, get a chance to talk and exchange some stories, but unfortunately we're not able to do that. This evening is about registration. Usually we have the opportunity to have clubs and activities and sports teams but since we're in the situation that we are right now during the pandemic, that will be coming at a later date and hopefully some particular way we can in person. But again, that'll be later on. Today, our main focus, or excuse me, this evening, our main focus is the registration process. At this time, I'm gonna introduce all of my assistant principals and then we'll hand the program over to the school counseling uh, department. So at this time, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce Mr. Al Johnson, Assistant Principal. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. It's great that you're here virtually. Uh, this is my fifth year at Bellard High School, uh, my 24th year um, in high school, which is amazing to me. Um, you know, every year I look at the seniors and I marvel at how much they have grown since they were a freshman. So I want to assure you uh, that your freshmen will be fine. Uh, they're going to make it, you know, with our help. Um, and it's just a, it's a great experience. High school is a great experience and, and we're here for them. Um, I also have uh, I have two kids, one in college, one in high school, and I, I'm currently experiencing some of the pains you are of virtual learning. It's not easy. Um, you know, we're all we're all kind of learning from this uh, and we're growing from this. But our hopes is that next year we'll be ready to go uh, full board and, and back in person. And so part of that process is, is tonight. It's the registration process. Um, and so I hope you find this very informative and I'm going to introduce the next assistant principal, Ms. Natrice, quickly. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Good evening, parents and students. And again, welcome to our registration for our ninth grade class, incoming class. It truly is indeed an awesome opportunity to be working here at Bel Air High School. This is my first year. I've been in Hartford County for 23 years now, and I have had the privilege of working in the middle school for 14 years and eight years in the high school. Um, as Mr. Johnson said, yes. Um, I do have uh, children who are also experiencing uh, the virtual world. I'm a very proud parent of three. Um, and I have a daughter who's in the seventh grade who is struggling and um, finding success. Um, but it's very important that we understand we are in this together. Dr. Martin Luther King once said, if you can't walk, if you can't run, then walk. And if you can't walk, crawl. But by all means, keep moving and we are going to keep moving together. Um, and at this time, I would like to uh, introduce another administrator, Mr. Jason Redman. Good evening, good evening everybody. My name is Jason Redman and my primary responsibility here at Beller High School uh, is the senior class, uh, but I'm excited to be welcoming your students to our, our family here uh, in Bobcat Nation. This is my first year at Beller High School I'm um, splitting time. Uh, I'm also with your students next door at the middle school. Um, my primary responsibility over there is sixth grade. Uh, this is my 18th year in Hartford County, and I spent the last six years as a middle school administrator where I primarily worked with eighth grade. Uh, so I know the excitement that your students are going through right now. I know all of the questions that they have. 
uh, all the forms that they are so excited to fill out uh, and all the new experiences that they're going to see. And I'm really excited to see it um, from this end and help them transition uh, from middle school uh, into high school. As our presentation continues tonight, we're going to switch things over to the school counseling department and they're going to walk you through uh, the ins and outs of the registration process, including all the different class options, graduation requirements, and how to navigate uh, the different online resources throughout this process. Later on during the presentation, we're going to open up a QA and a uh, over on the right hand side of your screen where you're able to submit uh, your questions, which we'll try to answer toward the end of the presentation. But we're not going to open that up right away. What we want you to do is to focus as much as you can on the presentation that's happening uh, and keep a little sheet of paper for yourself on the side and write down those questions that you have because we may answer them during the actual presentation. But if we don't, uh, later on in the pre presentation, check over to the right hand side of your screen uh, and look for that Q&A to be open. Uh, and that's how we'll close tonight. So I'm going to throw it back to our presenters uh, in the school counseling department so they can go ahead uh, and kick off tonight's presentation. Miss Knight, you're muted. Good evening. Sorry about that. Um, welcome to Bel Air High School's presentation for uh, freshmen for next year. My name is Terry Knight. I am the department chair of the school counseling office. Uh, we had the pleasure of popping into every math class today at Bel Air High School, uh, Bel Air Middle School. I really need to give a shout out to Bel Air Middle School. Um, the teachers, the administrators, uh, the school counseling office, Mr. Ride, they've done an amazing job in providing us support, um, prepping your students so that they were prepared for this presentation today. So um, when you have the opportunity, give a shout out to them. Um, I know some of you were in contact with them today to receive the link for this presentation. So um, we really could not pull this off without their support and their dedication. As I mentioned, we had the opportunity to visit uh, their classrooms virtually. Uh, we got to see many students' faces, hear their voices, and uh, some of them participated via the chat. So we're going to also have the opportunity this evening to hear from you and ask your questions. I hope they were excited. Uh, they might feel a little overwhelmed or a little anxious about the process. What we asked them to do is ask you to come this evening so that we could help you learn what they learned today and then help address some of their worries and their concerns. Please know this is a process that we're going to continue uh, for the end until the end of the school year. But as Mr. Commander mentioned, we begin this process now so that we have some information to build our master schedule. We build our master schedule based on the interests of the students. So that's why it's important to begin the process early. We're going to take you through the PowerPoint, um, just what we presented to your students today. So this PowerPoint will be live um, when it's on its learning. So I'm going to go through it. There's no need to take a whole lot of notes. You will have reference to the PowerPoint to download, to refer to. We've put it on its learning for you and we'll show you where that is. And then we'll also have it attached to the, the presentation of this live event this evening so that you can refer to it um, via the website also. So let's go ahead and begin. Here's the rest of the counselors. You'll have the opportunity to meet a couple of them this evening. Unfortunately, Ms. Hackett wasn't able to join us this evening, but she'll be available for questions and to provide support along the way. At the high school level, we go by, um, the counselors are paired with students based on the uh, first letter of their last name. So whereas in middle school, Mr. Rudd stayed with them all year, we'll be able to do the same thing for four years. However, we're going to break it down by last name. So, for example, Mr. Noss works with those students whose last name begins with the letter A through F. Last name begins with G through MI, Ms. Hackett. I work with all the MO through P and then Biomed. And then Ms. McKinney works with the letters of the alphabet Q through Z. So that's how we'll break it down and the counselors will work with you for the four years. That way it gives us some opportunity to give the extra attention to the freshmen that need it. And then seniors, 
the lot of work that it entails as they're applying for colleges. You'll be able to refer to this slide for our last names and for uh, emails as needed. So here's some important dates. Today, a very important date. We had the pleasure, of, like I mentioned, of visiting Belair Middle School into the classrooms and presenting this information to your student. Tonight is the parent meeting. Now anticipating there's going to be some questions, we did create a live um, opportunity for your students to interact with us during lunch tomorrow. So there will be a Teams meeting link. It's on their It's Learning page already. So during lunch tomorrow, if they have some questions, prompt them to visit us via that link tomorrow during lunch. All four counselors will be there and as needed, we'll break out and meet them individually. Uh, but a lot of them like being part of that meeting so that they can hear what other students' questions are. We're going to have another meeting this Friday during their asynchronous day. Same thing, the link will be provided on the It's Learning page and they'll be able to access to it, um, access it that way. Uh, we may do one next Wednesday, depending on uh, how many students are having questions. And we will definitely do one on the 12th, which is the day the registration materials are due. Now this gives you a week and a half. What we've asked the students to do is for this week and a half, let's make a concentrated effort to have a conversation with teachers, parents, and make an informed decision with the information that we're providing you this evening on what classes do we want for now. We realize times change. Um, you know, the lots happened over the last year. So if for some reason there's a schedule change request, all you have to do is reach out to us and we will assist you with that change. So by no means is this a final request. This is your initial request so that we can begin gathering the information and also get the kids a kickstart and starting to think about next year, which is really exciting. It's a little ray of hope right now, and I think we all need that. So what's the difference between high school and middle school? I'm going to tag this off to Mr. Noss, and he's going to um, help you through some of these questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Knight. Knight. Good evening. So glad to be here with you all. We were reven we were talking yesterday as a department how excited we are to talk to the uh, middle schoolers every year. It's one of our highlights of the year. Uh, we were talking about how great it is to go over there and to talk to them in person. So this year was a little disappointing, but we still had some some great interaction with the kids. Uh, Miss uh, McKinney, one of our counselors, created a, a Kahoot lesson, which I don't know if you're familiar with, but it's an interactive game. We played with all the kids and and my classes. I got 100 percent participation from that, and it was wonderful to see they were so engaged and it was just a review activity and they almost everybody got the right answers, which means they were really paying attention. They also had really great questions for us, so I really enjoyed our, our day at the middle school today. And I'm, I'm happy you guys are here with us tonight as well. Uh, we do kind of do the intro talk about middle school versus high school and what the difference is between the two. And we usually ask, you know, how many of them are familiar with the change, with the differences in the two environments. And sometimes we have kids who have siblings and others who have friends. Um, so we basically just tell them the, the, the general things that you probably already know, but let me just run, run down them real quick. Of course, the building is different. We have three floors. Sometimes that's very intimidating to uh, eighth graders when they come over in the ninth grade, uh, but we explain to them that they have plenty of time to get between classes. That's always helpful to tell them. Uh, we also talk about how high school is not a teamed event, how um, middle school is all based on their team, so they go from class to class with the same team of kids, and that, that high school is not that way. Uh, we also talk about the start time, how it's uh, uh, pretty early, uh, and we kind of Tell them that's kind of the downer, but the good thing is that you, you're dismissed at 2 p.m., so they get excited about that. Um, and then we talk in detail about the schedule and some credits issues that I'll talk about in just a minute. We also talk about the whole inclusive part of, of high school, how it's more than just academics, and it's very important that they get involved in clubs and sports and things like that, and it really creates, creates the memories that you all had when you were in high school. And uh, so we were hoping to get them engaged in more than just the academic discussion. 
So those are the things we can we discuss with them. Then we talk more detail with with them about what high school looks like academically and what uh, the terminology is. And much of this is terminology that carries into college, as you as many of you know, and it's the first time they may have heard of some of these terms. So we go through the terms pretty closely. I don't need to do that with you all. I'm sure you're familiar with the terms. Um, one thing that they do get a little confused about is the alternate classes. We do ask them to choose classes that they probably will not get. Um, they're just classes that are there in case the electives are full or conflict with one another. They will have to take the alternate classes, so that that's a little confusing for them. But other than that, I think they understand the material that we share with them as far as the credits. Um, we, we do talk about transcripts and how high school begins their transcript experience, and it's very important to hit the ground running right away because every quarter is important and the final grades are very important beginning in ninth grade not to minimize what's happening in middle school, but to emphasize the importance of starting very early on in ninth grade with a very diligent work ethic because uh, people request transcripts all the time for the rest of your life and they are reflective of ninth through twelfth grade. And I was lucky I was lucky because last week I was in the building uh, sharing this information with high schoolers and the secretary came in just as I was speaking and after I was done, I asked her what was she doing in our in our office and she said she was searching for a transcript from 1979 uh, and I said what in the world she said yeah we get those requests all the time uh, people need transcripts for the rest of their life for employers and, and uh, colleges and things like that so trying just to get the kids to realize that these these days really matter that uh, it's not something that is thrown under the rug but the things that um, that they do the disciplines in their life right now will be reflective on, on a sheet of paper that will be shared with many people in the world so We talk a lot about the schedule because it's very different than what they're experiencing at the middle school. So our schedule, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the schedule, but we are on a block schedule, which means we have four classes on A day, which are Mondays and Wednesdays. The other four classes are on B days on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and Friday is an asynchronous day, just like it is at the middle school. So they have each class twice a week, the classes are lengthy. They're about an hour and a half long, but I, I make sure to tell the kids the truth. The teachers are excellent at varying the activities during the class to make it uh, feel like the time goes by quickly and they don't get bored. Um, and the kids are um, very comfortable with the schedule because uh, once you get used to it, it's really it really has quite a few advantages. If you think about it, um, every class is not offered every day, so if you have a homework assignment that was assigned on Monday, uh, it's due on Wednesday. Or if you have a homework assignment due on uh, assigned on Thursday, it's not due until Tuesday. You have plenty of time to complete some assignments. So there are a lot of perks to this uh, this schedule. This is a sample schedule. I have three samples that I'll show you in the next three slides. Uh, a typical ninth grade schedule. A day has four classes. B day has four classes. These are the classes that generally uh, students take and uh, there will be some electives that they can pick from like drama is an elective on here. Spanish is an elective and I'll go through that list in just a minute. But um, this is how it works. So again, A day is Monday, Wednesday. They'll have those four classes listed. And then on Tuesday, Thursday, they'll have the other four and Fridays an asynchronous day. Here's a sample of a student who is uh, maybe a little behind on math and needs to take a little extra math. And so we provide a daily math course called Intro to Algebra and Algebra One. So these students take math every day. This is kind of breaking the rule uh, in a sense. They will take Intro to Algebra for the first half of the year with the same teacher every day, A and B day. And then um, after the semester ends, they take Algebra One. Same kids, same teacher, just a different curriculum and a different credit opportunity. So the students will be able to receive two math credits uh, by the end of ninth grade and receive the Algebra One credit. And the final sample is for students that have a, that are participating in our Biomed program. They are required to take the Principles of Biomed class as well as the Honors Biology and the other classes are by choice. Uh, most of them are in the Algebra 2 as well. 
This is the requirements for Harford County for graduation. Very similar, I'm sure, to the graduation requirements you had as a high schooler, if you remember. Um, things haven't changed too much. If you notice on this, uh, there are requirements for English and math that are four credits. Every year you must have an English. Every year you must have a math. Science and social studies are three, and you can read the rest um, below. And the ninth grade classes are pretty prescribed, as you can see. Um, there is some wiggle room to what classes they can take but a lot of it is assigned to them, same with 10th grade. If you notice, I love this graphic because if you notice 11th and 12th grade having a great liberty uh, in the selection of courses, not a lot of requirements and a lot of room for options for them to take. Um, and I like to share with them how high school works is very different than middle school. If you fail a course in high school, they don't just move you on to the next course. It is actually placed back in their schedule for the year after, or they can take summer school. So if um, if government has failed in ninth grade, they will have to take it in 10th grade, which means world history will be moved to 11th grade, which means US history will be moved to 12th grade. And if that happens too much, then 12th grade really gets crowded. And what, I, what we try to give them incentives for are options. So 12th grade has a lot of options if you're in good standing and many of our students do part time attendance in 12th grade as I did in, in 12th grade and that's that's available to any student as long as their credit are, are in good standing. Additionally, beside the 26 credits required for graduation, if you noticed on that last slide, there was 26 total that are required. We also have service learning requirements and testing requirements. Service learning requirements are of no concern to students in eighth grade because they will receive those credits every year they're in middle school and high school. So they will automatically get their credits within embedded within the curriculum of certain classes. So they don't have to worry about that and go out and do extra extra service. If they want to do National Honor Society, that's different service opportunities. But for graduation purposes, they're all set. And then the other thing is the testing requirements that varies by grade level. And there's a great document called the Student Education Planning Guide, which uh, Ms. McKinney will show you in a few minutes how to access that. And that will describe the requirements for graduation. There are four state tests that will have to be taken for graduation, and she'll explain that to you when she shows you that document. That document again, Student Education Planning Guide is a great resource. It's on the HCPS website. I won't go into it too much, but I do want to tell you it has two great features. One is what I just shared, the graduation requirements. The other is it has a description of every course offered in Harford County. So if a student is looking at the list uh, this week and next week and trying to figure out if he wants to take drama or not, helping them make that decision is this document. It'll it'll describe what actually happens in a drama class so that they can make an educated decision. I had a student uh, that emails me weekly about a class that he doesn't like a freshman and wishes he wasn't he didn't choose it. That's a good example of somebody who didn't do their homework before the class because everything he's describing in that course is exactly what should be happening in that course. He just doesn't like it. So, uh, to, so being educated about the course and the material is very important. Pathways. I did not talk about pathways when we were on the list of requirements. Pathways are something that is discussed more in ninth and 10th grade. I don't want to confuse everyone. I know it's a confusing document. Uh, pathways are basically like a major. So every college requires a major for graduation and high schools now require a major to be completed. And we just call that a pathway. You do not have to declare your pathway until sophomore year. So there's no rush at all. They can dabble in some classes and try them out. But by 10th grade, by the end of 10th grade, they have to commit to one of these pathways and finish them for graduation. And eligibility requirements is, um, yeah, I think that's my last slide and then Ms. McKinney will come up. Eligibility requirements. There are requirements for students to be um, involved in after school activities. So whether it's sports or clubs or, or band performances or, or drama performances, everything, um, every student has to be eligible. And this is a statewide uh, thing. So if a student is involved in an activity and the report card comes out and there is an E on there or there has been discipline during that quarter, 
the student will be required to be withdrawn from that activity. So we use this as a motivator to help kids realize that it's very important that they keep their grades up and do as well as they can. Um, and uh, this, this, this is kind of, kind of one of those non-negotiables that even if you're a star player on the team, once that report card comes out, you are off the team to the, to the um, detriment of everyone involved. So very important to keep the grades on. Thank you for listening. I assume you were listening. <laughs> uh, Ms. McKinney will be talking now to you and also sharing with you some websites. Hi, everyone. So I am Ms. McKinney. I have last names Q through Z. So just as a reminder, I have all last names Q through Z. Um, as Ms. Knight talked about earlier, um, we went through a bunch of stuff. So I just, I just want to take a moment to say, Take a deep breath. We're going to go over some things that this is kind of like the meat of what we talked about with your students today. Um, I know it may seem a little confusing, but we really have it very um, specific on its learning. And if you want to follow along with us, um, you know, you can watch what I'm doing, but you can also ask your student to open up their its learning tile um, and I'll kind of walk you through um, two things. So we're going to go through the course registration sheet, the actual sheet, and we're also going to go through the course registration app. This is something that we're asking these students to do for the very first time. So in the past, and even our high schoolers, we've never had them um, do the actual app before. We've always we've always done it in the counseling office. Um, so it may feel like a lot, but this is going to be the time that you really, really want to pay attention to exactly what you have to do here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, put my it's learning up on the screen. Let me just share that with you. And so when you go into your students, it's learning. <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're going to see all of their tiles. So if you haven't yet, you're going to see all of their tiles in there. It's learning. You're going to see something that says eighth grade school counseling virtual office. And you actually see Mr. Rudd's picture right on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to click into that. And when we click into it, I'm going to go to student mode so I can show you what it looks like from your student's perspective. So we have we have a bunch of stuff in here. So what we tried to do is we made it up at the top here. So we made all the plans up here at the top. There's a few places where you can find what I'm about to talk about, but I'm going to focus on the overview. So when I'm on overview, I'm going to show more. And I'm going to see there's that freshman registration PowerPoint. So this is what we're this is what we're going through right now. Um, and there's the registration form. When I click on the registration form, it's going to open up here. And I'm going to open that up. And it's fillable. So you can actually walk through this registration sheet together. Um, we did have some students submit it already, um, and that's not a bad thing. Maybe they just knew what they wanted to do. Um, so if you did want to reopen that, just email your counselor and we can open that back up for you. Um, so when we're going through the registration sheet, I'm going to try to, let me see if I can zoom in there a little bit. We ask for your student to fill out the top here. OK, so we have student name and when it's virtual, it's easy to forget that. So we've had some students not necessarily fill out their name. So we want to make sure, you know, it's so simple, um, but we do want to make sure the student puts their name in there. So we'll have the student name in there, their ID or their lunch pin number. So some students were like, what's the ID number? It's their lunch pin. We ask for the student cell phone number, and the reason for that is sometimes when we're in over the summer, which we're not very much in over the summer, but when we're doing schedule changes, sometimes it's a lot easier for us to just Google text your student on our Google Voice numbers. OK, so maybe we're in the office really early. It's really it's, it's a lot more simple just to reach out to them via text and they can get back to us whenever. If your student doesn't have a cell phone number, no problem. You can actually just put your student's um, email in there and that's totally fine as well. Um, they'll be our first point of contact. If not, we'll just go to the parent cell um, or the parent email. 
either way, this is just a way for us to communicate to you and your student about any schedule changes that we may need to make over the summer. So let's get to the bulk of it. When we're looking at um, the course registration sheet, it's really broken down very simple, kind of what Mr. Noss was saying. A lot of their classes are chosen for them, um, but you really have the freedom to choose the level of courses. What I'm going to encourage you to do is really take the time to look on the student education planning guide, which Miss Knight will be going over right after I'm done in the app. Um, and kind of see what the difference is between honors classes, AP classes, and regular, because there really is a difference between the three um, areas. So um, when I was showing your student earlier, um, when we were walking through, I was kind of filling this out with them. And so I encourage them to walk through it with me. Um, so when we're filling this out, we just want to put an X right next to the class that we want. Um, I also encourage them if they're better at highlighting, if that makes more sense to them, like it does me, um, you can highlight. And that's if that's easier, that's awesome. I also encourage if you can print, that might be helpful too to kind of work through this. Even though this is one page and it may seem simple for your student, it's a lot. And you might be looking at this and you might be thinking, whoa, this is a lot. But like Miss Knight was saying, the eighth grade teachers have been amazing and Mr. Rudd has been awesome. And we're all here to support you guys. Um, we want what you want and we want what's best for your student. Um, so ask those questions, go to those teams meetings, um, reach out to us. So science, I'm just gonna go with regular. Biology, let me put that there. Mathematics. So for the purpose of showing you what it looks like in terms of um, putting one um, math class in versus two, I'm going to put intro to algebra, algebra one. OK, so that's two credits. So just be aware when you are putting in the electives or the alternate alternates, um, we will I'll show you what that looks like when we put it in the app. So that does make a difference when you're putting in those courses. Social studies, I'm just going to put regular American government. Health and PE is already populated in every one of your students course registration sheet. So um, don't worry about putting that in the app that's already populated in there for you. And I'll show you what that looks like. Now, fine art, you have to select one of these. OK, so we went over with your student today what each of these mean. Um, and also you can look in the um, student education planning guide to get more of an idea of what these fine art courses mean, like kind of like the breakdown of them. And then we get to the elective side. So I told my students, I said, if you guys have not been paying attention, pay attention now, because this is really a good, um, this is an important part of this course registration sheet. We don't want to see X's on here. OK, we want to see numbers one, two and three, and it really is on the course registration sheet. But I understand we're looking at computers all day. It may it may feel a little overwhelming. So when you're looking through the um, the electives, you want to make sure, let's say I put fine art prep over here. You want to make sure that you're not um, filling out fine art prep over here. OK, so you want to do three different electives and we went over this with your student. So you're going to put in number one, two and three. OK, so I'm just going to kind of pick random ones. Principles of business and let's say that computer class. I want that to be number three. You'll notice right here if you're enrolling in a daily course like I did here. That intro to algebra, algebra one, only one of your electives will be chosen. So that number one will be Spanish or whatever you decide your number one is. Your third choice will only be used if your first and second choice are not able to be in the schedule for you. OK, so you want to make sure you're picking classes that or your student is picking classes that they do want to take. So kind of take number two and three seriously for sure. Um, when I go back to it's learning and it saves it so you guys can go into your it's learning and they can start filling it out and come back to it. It'll save it. OK, only when you're ready to submit that first draft like um, Miss Knight was saying, this is not a final draft. This is a first draft. So if you want to change anything on there, no worries. You just email your school counselor. When you are finished, when your students finish, they can click submit. OK. So I'm going out of here. 
So you'll see on here, I'm back to that overview page. On here, what I'm seeing is I can visit the resources and I'll show you that in a minute. I see that PowerPoint that I was talking about and then the registration app and that is step number two. So if you are writing things down like Mr. Redmond had talked about, um, what I would write down is step one is the course registration sheet. Step two is the course registration app. So they're two different things. Um, I'll come back to the app in one second. What I want to show you is in resources. When I go to the registration information, I see a lot of departments. So it's broken down into departments and their course description. So the teachers did a really great job at Beller High School coming up with ways to make it fun um, and simple to look at to um, really show you what these courses look like. Now, this is just for all students at Beller High School. This is not just um, for your ninth grade classes. So you can kind of see in the future what you may want to take. It's really neat. When I go back to resources, you see some helpful forms here. So that pathways chart that that, that was in the PowerPoint that Mr. Noss um, kind of went over a little bit. Again, you don't have to worry about the pathways chart. That's not something that you need to focus in on or hone in on at all. They will decide that in 10th, at the end of their 10th grade year. Senior accountability. This is just a helpful way to kind of track what classes your, your students taking throughout their four years in high school. So this is really a great tool to print out and really work through their, their four years, just so that um, they're keeping track of the classes that they need for graduation. It's just another way we use it um, when we work with our juniors and our seniors to make sure that they have gotten all of their credits that they need for graduation. All right, and you'll see here the PowerPoint is right here as well. So I'm going to go back to overview. And I see this registration app, so this is step two, like I was talking about. And when you go in, your student will put in their um, their student login, whatever they use to sign into the laptop or their hack account. And it's going to come up with this. This is what it's going to look like when they sign in. So keep in mind, this is the second part of this, OK? What they're going to do is they're actually going to refer back to this to find the course numbers, OK? So I'm looking here and I have English 9, OK? So I have EN0101. And what I'm going to do, actually, it's very helpful if you do Control F. That way you can find it very easily. You can do EN0101 and it just highlights it right there for you. And then you're going to add course. So I don't want to add this to the student's particular um, list, but when I add course, it's going to add over here. And you're going to notice that when I talked about it earlier, that health and that PE is right in there. Um, so you're going to add those eight courses, OK? And if you think back to the Intro to Algebra, Algebra 1 class, that's going to take away one of your or two of your um, your course requests. So it's going to you're going to add the alternate. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to show you this when I'm adding an alternate. Let's say it's number three. OK, my number three is CA0501. I'm putting in CA0501. That's going to be my alternate. I'm going to add that to the alternate column right here. OK, now just keep in mind when you are going through this, this app has all the classes for Beller High School, so it's not just for ninth grade. So you want to make sure when you're working through this with your student that you're choosing the exact classes that are on their course registration sheet. And that's why we put those course numbers on there to make it easily accessible for you to just see what those course numbers are. Again, if you wanted to highlight them, sometimes that's just easier okay, um, for you to work through. But you just want to make sure your student is not choosing, like let's say here's this Maryland Fire and Rescue Institute program. You want to make sure they're not adding that to their schedule because they can't do that yet. Okay, that's way down the road in senior year. So you just want to be aware of that. Okay. And then when you have all of your courses in there, you'll do set student to finish. Okay. When the set student to finish, that will submit their 
courses to us so we can build that master schedule that Mr. Commander was talking about and Miss Knight was talking about. No worries if you change your mind. Between now and the end of the year, you know, if you change your mind, just email your school counselor. It's no big deal. We can always change it in the system. All right, and I am going to send it to Miss Knight to talk about the student education planning guide. Thank you. Hi again, a lot of information. Um, Ms. McKinney and Mr. Noss did a fabulous job, so I really appreciate their assistance. A uh, couple of things to bring your attention to. Uh, the Biomed and the Magnet School uh, invitations to attend their programs should be coming out uh, starting the beginning of next week. So it's going to be important for you to monitor that with your students and make sure you reply, indicating if you accept the invitation into Biomed or into the Magnet School. Uh, that being said, even if you know that your student's going to go to a magnet school or potentially to a private school next year, we highly encourage you um, and we ask that you help your students submit their class requests. We will share that with their next school and that'll really help um, for placement even at the magnet school. Uh, around quarter three, we're going to send out a reminder to your students via email of what schedule they request, so what all their classes are. This way they'll have the opportunity to make any changes. It'll be a nice prompt to remind you, hey, let's think about this again. We've not thought about it for a little bit. Let's take a look. Are we still, are, am I still interested in drama or do I want to do chorus? What's changed? Maybe something academically has changed and they want to change something on their schedule. That would be the appropriate time to email a request back. We highly encourage to the best that we can to make these decisions before the end of the school year. That way we can really work on getting those classes that your students interested in doing. When we talk about the general honors and AP, help your students look at the overall rigor. Honors and AP take more time. So often I hear from students, they're like, oh, you know, I, I could do the work, but they don't take into consideration that they are going to collaborate more with their peers or do some class presentations. That's a big part of honors and AP. So encourage your student that we're teaching them the life skills to be more successful overall. And at the end of an AP class, they'll have the opportunity to take the exam and potentially get some college credit. So when you look at saving some money for college, that's a good way to do it. Uh, world language, we typically do recommend majority of our students, probably about 80% of our freshmen, will take at least one of the world languages. So four year universities really like to see a minimum of two years of the same world language. Often we'll recommend to our students that are taking the daily math to go ahead and wait to do the world language probably until their 10th grade year. That way they have a little more room in their schedule and they take, in, take some other classes that they're interested in taking. All right, so I am going to show you where the student education planning guide is. Uh, you've probably been to Harford County Public Schools main website, but often your students don't uh, know where to look for information. So please help them navigate this and it would be a good place for them to start gathering information in their high school years. So if you go to HCPS's main website, if you click on students, you're going to see a lot of helpful resources. What we're looking at tonight is the student education planning guide. Now this is a live document that's often updated. Um, just the other day when I was in there, I was trying to show a student something and I could see central office was in there making some updates. Here's general information on need to know, graduation requirements. Um, it'll, it'll go through a variety of things, so you can peek around however you'd like on this. A lot of helpful information. Our focus is on courses tonight because we're keeping our fo fo focus on registration. So what I recommend you do is you go to Bel Air High School. Otherwise, it can be a little overwhelming because it has all of the courses that are possible throughout the county. So we want to focus on Bel Air High School and say, for example, I want to look at, say, English. So if you go to that, you're going to see English. If you click on the blue, you'll see that it'll do the web of the English. So this will show you and your student, mm, I need English one, then English two, and here's my options for English three. 
So you'll notice something like journalism, even though it's in the English department, that isn't a class that you can substitute to meet the English requirement. You can also click on the descriptions. So the difference between honors and general English, what is it? In that way, it helps your student understand what the expectations are. It's a good tool. Um, the same thing for AP, and then it's where the prerequisites are. So a prerequisite to be an English 2 is to go ahead and pass the English 1. So I encourage you to look through this. Um, go to, uh, oh, we've got family and consumer science. We have a lot of different things in here. Uh, one of the different, one of the new programs we have is a new CTE that is an interactive media class that we're offering. And that is going to be found under technology. So your students are actually the first ones for us to have that. And I just noticed that it's not in here, so I'm going to make sure I fix that. But on the registration sheet, you'll notice that it'll say under the electives of an interactive um, media. So have a look at that and I'll make sure I update this. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and um, I appreciate your time. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Kosuf and he's going to assist with the Q&A um, portion for this evening. Thank you. Mr. Kasuf. I, I got it. This is uh, not the first time I forgot to unmute. Anyway, my name is Andrew Kasuf. I teach math at Beller High School along with um, Miss Benfield, uh, her and I serve as the parent and communicate parent and community engagement coordinators. And we've been working together with a team of teachers and staff at Beller High School to provide um, helpful live events like this this evening with various staff at our school uh, for parents and students to learn together. And those things we post to our school website and we'll have uh, available. Uh, when we're back to live um, in-person events, uh, we will have things available for you guys to attend together to learn as a team uh, to help support your student uh, and their success. So tonight uh, we've opened up the Q&A and uh, Mr. Redmond, do you have the first question for us this evening? You're muted, I think. We've got a couple questions uh, that are around the same topic. If Ms. Knight could speak to uh, the entering of electives from the form into the app. They're marking one, two, and three on the form. And then how does that look in the app? Perfect, good question. So in the app, um, in the form, when you go to the app, they're probably going to get their first two choices. So for example, if they're in geometry and um, for the electives, they pick, uh, say, biomed, world language, that's going to be within the top part of the app. So they have a total of eight classes. For so those students, they would only end up having one elective in the alternate, and they can just say they can still hit finished. So what we're looking is for that they have a minimum of eight classes at the top. Um, and we will have access to the paper form so we can get any clarification and clean up any of the data that we may need to do. So the uh, the forms are quite important um, and you know it's good to know that you guys are helpful um, a helpful resource to, to help parents with that. Mr. Redmond, how about our next question? Yes, uh, we've got a couple of questions related to uh, the process by which uh, students should select those honors classes and recommendations from their current teachers on taking either honors or AP. Excellent. Mr. Noss, uh, would you be able to take that question for us? Yes, so, so far great questions. That is a really good one. Um, teachers are there for you to get advice from. They are not there to tell you what to do. That's a big difference. So teachers are great. They know your students very well and they have recommendations. Um, the teacher I worked with today was very clear and said you as a student can do whatever you want as far as picking your classes, but 
I am advising this one. And so take that with a, um, take that seriously because again, they know your student's discipline level and how much they can handle as far as um, honors. The big thing we want you to um, consider is there's certain kids that just want to max out on every class and take the highest level possible. That's fine and good, but when you take that in a cumulative effect, it really is overwhelming at times. So you may look at, at one class and say, oh, I can handle honors English. Oh, I can handle biology. Oh, I can handle AP government. But when you put them all together in the same year, the workload becomes very extensive and um, you just have to know your child and decide based on the whole picture what's best for them. Teachers do not see that big picture only because they're just recommending their specific course. So an uh, English teacher will recommend honors or regular for that. But the, as a parent, I want you guys to make sure you look at the big picture, the whole schedule, and make a determination based on that. And that's very helpful, Mr. Noss, uh, to reinforce that as a team, the teacher, the parent, and the student kind of work together for success. Um, excellent, excellent advice. Uh, Mr. Redmond, how about another question? This one will probably go to Ms. Knight. We have a couple questions related to the biomed program. Um, I'll just ask both and then you can answer. Um, parents are wondering if they should wait until they get acceptance into biomed before completing the registration process if they've applied. And then if they do not get into biomed in 10th grade, are they able to reapply or not get in in 9th grade? Are they able to reapply in 10th grade? Great. Um, I think, you know, I would recommend waiting uh, because we're going to we're looking at getting those invitations out starting on Monday. So hopefully come Monday or Tuesday, you'll know uh, the forms are due by the 12th. So regardless of you might not have heard back from all the magnet programs, get the registration form in by the 12th. If uh, so, what I would recommend if you didn't get that acceptance letter in yet, uh, put out put down for regular or honors biology. You can put biomed as your elective and I will double check that. So I have access to the database as I get your invitation, your acceptance in later or to double check, I'll make sure the placement happens. So whatever you find easiest for you, if your student wants to rush and get it done this week because they're going to give them peace of mind, that's that's a big priority. Uh, my recommendation, if possible, wait until you hear back and then you can mark it on your form. As far as applying to 10th grade year, unfortunately, that's not an option. Um, the biomed program is um, a program in which you need to take the classes in a certain sequence. I will reassure you, though, Bel Air High School has uh, tremendous resources when it comes to math and science. So please encourage your student to reach out to their counselor and we can help them really navigate that and find the best fit for them, even though the biomed won't be a possibility. That flexibility you mentioned uh, is super um, reassuring, I guess, that when we submit this form, it's not necessarily the be all end all uh, that there's some opportunity for some some flex and change. Uh, so thanks for highlighting that as well as the math and science that we have to offer in addition to biomed. Uh, that was super helpful. Uh, Mr. Redmond, how about our next question, please? Is foreign language required or just recommended? This sounds like a great question for Mr. Noss. Oh, does it? <laughs> I was at Mr. Uh, Mr. Kasuf and I were toying with the students because that I tell them that uh, that is the probably the number one question I've had in all my years of uh, doing registration. And the answer isn't an easy one. It's a yes and no question. It's a yes and no answer. Yes, in that colleges really like to see a foreign language nearly every four year school that the students are applying to require at least two years of a foreign language. That's not the case with community college, but any four year school requires foreign language. And the other yes is that about half the pathways require foreign language or tech ed to be completed for their pathway to be completed as well. So um, you can get through high school without the foreign language requirement. And that's that's OK. There's a way to graduate without the foreign language requirement, but that does box you in 
to going to a two-year school or something else and it doesn't permit you to, to access the four-year uh, school route. The, I remember joking with you about the yes and no answer and how that's challenging. So I, I knew you were perfect for that. Uh, thanks for helping to explain both the yes and the no. Uh, Mr. Redmond, how about our next question? Will students that have IEPs or 504 plans receive any additional guidance regarding course selection? Uh, this is a great question uh, for Miss Knight, and uh, we may have another that uh, might respond as well, but we'll go to Miss Knight first. Hi. So um, what we've done to assist your students with the IEPs, since that's driven their classes, um, as far as being in the co-taught classes are driven based on their IEP, we're going to directly get that information from the case managers at the middle school. So Ms. Gingrich can refer a little more to that in a moment, but we're going to directly get that information to make sure that we're compliant and we provide all the support that's needed for your students with an IEP. Uh, for the 504, the case manager, Mr. Rudd, will have the opportunity to meet with the counselors later in the school year to assist with that. So the primary person right now for you and your students to reach out to is the teacher that's working with them. But we I promise you we will get the information from the case managers. Ms. Gingrich, would you like to add anything to that? Hi, yes, I'm Ms. Gingrich. I'm the special education department chair, and I can just assure you that in the spring, usually May, sometimes into June, we do meet with the middle school. We talk about each individual student. We try to attend IEP meetings at the end of the year when we can, and we will make sure that we um, take all the recommendation of the team that knows your student best and help to um, build the student's schedule to get them the support that they need. We have an excellent team in our special ed department and along with guidance, uh, rest assured that uh, your student will be taken care of for sure. Uh, Mr. Redmond, how about the next question? Yep, for this one, we're going to throw this one to Mr. Commander. We have uh, lots of questions regarding uh, what will Flex Friday look like in real uh, in-person learning? And what does our actual daily schedule uh, look like since they know that we're, we're in virtual times right now and it'll look a little bit different uh, when we get to the year. So if you could throw it to him and you already have. Uh, well, Flex Fridays, and again, I ask that you please understand that we are hoping, fingers crossed, and assuming we'll be back to a, a normal schedule next year if everything goes well. So at that point, um, we'll go to a regular A day, B day, A day, B day, and then another A day based on the rotation. Um, so we'll have five days a week. The the times, uh, they'll be a little bit different because uh, the day has to have four lunches in it. Right now, there's only two lunches, which are a half hour each because of the meal distribution. So while uh, we'll be able to provide you with a schedule over the summer uh, when we send a packet to you of information, but basically the day is still the same. The students will get their homeroom starts at 725. The day ends at two o'clock. Uh, it is four periods of day uh, for, for the classes. And then uh, they're approximately 85 minutes long. Uh, it may be tweaked a little bit because of the fact of lunches, but the students have their uh, lunch period during uh, period three and four based on what rotation it is. Uh, I really don't want to get into giving you the schedule right now because I think it's uh, uh, it really doesn't do much once we get word of what we're going to be doing next year you will know the schedule immediately. Uh, one of the things that I do over the summer, just so you're aware of, uh, I do a letter to incoming ninth graders and then a letter to all students. So we will do that. And then again, as I said, once we get 
closer to the end of the year and we start to have another either a live event or some type of in-person event we'll be passing out things like uh, the schedule the rotation and also things like sports clubs and activities and uh, that, that was again very helpful and encouraging to think that we'll be back uh, next year um, in uh, full capacity. Uh, I want to encourage you and your, uh, as you work with your child, to encourage them without Flex Fridays and back to a normal schedule that when they have questions or need help from a teacher, that they can not be intimidated, but be in, um, welcomed to ask the teacher before school or after school, uh, you know, to, to help out a little bit. That's been one of the benefits of the Flex Friday, being able to do that during the day. Um, so again, uh, that can still continue just before or after school. Um, and to ask for help early, not wait until until later. Uh, Mr. Redmond, how about our next question? Yeah, we're going to do two more questions here. First one, um, can we uh, clarify for people why they have to do both the registration sheet and enter their classes into the registration app. And we are having a little bit of connection issues with the registration app. It seems like the link right now uh, is not working. Ms. Knight, can you take that one for us? I certainly can. Um, I apologize for the link. We'll look at that. Um, there's been some, um, a some glitches with the link and central office has been responding to us very quickly to assist with that. Um, the registration form, traditionally we would take that paper copy and we would enter it in for your student. We're going to have over 1600 students coming to this building uh, next year. So what we're asking is for your student, if possible, to go ahead and do the app also. The paper form is going to go to an it's learning file for us to have access to so we can compare it, pull information off of it if need be. The app actually goes directly into our database. So it goes into my master schedule information for next year. So that's live information and that's the benefit of doing the app. If you run into any connectivity issues and you're struggling with that, just have your student email us and let us know and they can just, we can pull up their registration form or they can email us their classes and we'll put it in the app for them. Thank you. This seems to be a recurring theme that as you run into issues or questions arise even after our event this evening uh, to reach out to your counselor um, as they are available and have a wealth of uh, knowledge and resources that they can help. Um, our, the questions that we did not get to this evening, we do have one more. Uh, we will be posting again uh, answers to those in kind of a frequently asked questions document along with this video to our website. And we'll make sure that the middle school emails out links to that, um, to those resources to you uh, after this event, once that's all put together and ready for you to review. Uh, Mr. Redmond, how about our last question? Yeah, we have a handful of people that are still in the register, the application progress for process for other magnet schools. Uh, they're wondering, should they wait until they hear about their acceptance or should they move forward with Beller High School registration just in case? And Ms. Knight, we'll go back to you for that as well. Thank you. So what we're going to ask is that even if you're waiting to hear from the Magnet School, please complete the Bel Air High School um, form and submit that. And when you do it in the app, um, the new school is going to have that same information. So that's going to be really helpful for the magnet school to see that you've selected the AP government or an honors class. Uh, they will we'll take care of the other classes and they may modify it a little bit, but please, please don't wait for the magnet schools. Uh, you can do that acceptance, but please complete the registration form for us and we'll be happy to share that information with a magnet school, private school, whoever it may be. Thank you. So that concludes our evening. Uh, we hope that you found this time helpful. Uh, there was a lot of information that was shared uh, with you. And again, this will be on our website. We will send an email to you with the link so that you can go back 
and review any portion uh, of the event that you might feel um, necessary uh, to answer some more questions as they arise. Uh, but again, remember, you are more than welcome to email your school counselor uh, by last name. That will be again on that slide early in the PowerPoint uh, so that you can uh, find out who to contact. Uh, also, the counselors will be available uh, for uh, drop in meetings at lunch uh, to, to help with this process as well. We look forward to seeing you next year and um, we're excited. So enjoy the rest of this school year. Have a great night.